My name is Travis, and I make videos on YouTube, but you figured that out already because you're clever and you've been watching about five hours of them so far. This is the third part of the fifth hour in a video series I call Design and Code My Personal Website in 12 Hours. I can hope by now you can tell I'm being a little loose with the whole 12 hour thing. Today we're making a custom responsive grid using Flexbox. We're not gonna be using an existing solution like Bootstrap or Foundation. And why is that, you may ask? Because we're cool. All right, are you guys pumped? I'm so pumped. I think we can get this grid situated tonight. I think I can do it tonight. I'm so excited. We just did the header and the mobile version of the navigation. And now I need to make a responsive grid that's going to be specific to this design that I built. Let's review the grid. You'll notice here I have two columns. It's really simple grid. Two columns, 300 pixels each, and 10 pixels of uh, padding or margin on the right and the left. So there's 20 pixel gutter in the center here, and there's gonna be 10 pixels on the uh, margin on, the, on each of the sides here. Now that's a very specific number. Number 320 is a, uh, is a number that you'll see on mobile devices as being the width of most mobile devices. Um, I'm thinking specifically for Apple devices because I have an Apple phone and you just kind of design Sometimes, sometimes you end up designing for what you got because, because you don't want your own phone to look dumb. Anyway, so what the grid is like, we have two columns at 320 pixels each, and then we have this side over here of 135 pixels, okay? So let's look at how these columns work. Sometimes these columns are both together centered, and we have like this. Right, a column here and a column of content here, and they're centered together and they look fine. Here is another instance of them being centered. This time, this one has elements that are going over off to the other one, but that's that's still that they will be contained in here and just like absolutely positioned and they just happen to be sitting up above. But these are two columns centered together again. So it's basically the same as the one above it. The one on top here is two columns but one is growing out into the left which is which is still fine i mean that's two columns centered right still so for the first three we have two columns centered this one's a little different because look this is a column here as as per the design but the actual content is right here so this one is not centered this column is floating in the middle of a of half of the visible space. The other half of the visible space is 100% taken up by these boxes. So this is a very, very different situation and we'll have to take account for that possibility when we develop our grid. Now this next one also is unique. It's like the, the, the columns right here, but the design is floating within that 50% area as well. Even though the 50% is not taking up this whole space. The design itself, they're, you know, they're floating in, inside of the space, inside of their 320 pixels. So the, the grid item is just floating around. And the same for these ones. These are not centered, or rather these are not together centered. They're individually centered in their half of a column. And this one is basically a full width, right? This subscribe box goes all the way across uh, the two columns, and so we'll have to figure out how that's going to break down when it goes into a mobile view, and then similar to the podcast section, and then this one doesn't even obey any grids. So we have to make a flexible enough grid system to accommodate all of these situations. That's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get started. I'm going to go into the index.html <clears throat> file here, and we had this spacer, but I'm just going to create a new file in the jade files and I'll call it uh, columns. And this is a temporary file. I don't think that it'll be a part of the eventual layout, but I'm using this as a way to test my uh, theory of how these columns will work out, right? So there's my columns file and I go into index.html and I'm going to create an include to include these columns, not and and, uh, percent percent. I'm going to include these columns, uh, this columns file into my layout so that I can have them rendered. Is it called column or columns? Columns. Uh, HTML. Okay. 
Coolio. Now check a check a look, <laughs> check a look, take a look at this. These columns are showing up in the home sections. So the home sections are the places where these, you know, these sections and the columns that we just looked at are going to show up, right? Currently in that home section, there's a div with a 2,000 pixel height, and I'll just leave it there. That doesn't matter, but I'll put that below the columns. Actually, I'll put these columns above that thing. So we can mess with it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So in our columns, a uh, new document here, we're going to simulate what it's like to be creating these sections. And so we're just going to use the section uh, HTML element, and you can class these things. Like, so the first one is going to be about. And inside the about, I want to have two columns, right? So column dash one and uh, another column dash one. Inside column dash one, I'll have a, a paragraph. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter right now. And we'll see what we got. I should just have here uh, in the design two two paragraphs. Well, 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 looky loo, looky loo. Okay, so why is this, why are these paragraphs pushing this sidebar all the way back over here? It's because they are set to display flex, these two columns in, uh, in the index right here. So uh, home wrap and, oh sorry, no, header, the header element, and the home sections are set to display flex, and they're flexing out without being told what should take priority, what should flex, what should not flex. So let's go back into the home SAS and say home wrap display flex, and I'll identify um, this element right here, home sections, class home sections, and I'll say flex <clears throat> one. That means it will be the one to grow and shrink. And since we have a defined width of 135 on uh, the, the sidebar, which is actually the header, it will remain firm. And when we make this wider, the home sections will be the growing and shrinking. Yeah, good, looks good. So the structure of our columns here uh, is in this section, we have two columns, column one, column two, and then each of these is a paragraph. So basically there's a column wrapping each of these paragraphs. I need to get these columns sorted out and get them um, set up. So let's come down here to uh, call dash one. I want your max width to be 300 pixels. And your margin is going to be 0 on the top and bottom and 10 on the left and right. Cool. Uh, you know what I'm thinking right now? I'm thinking that I don't want I don't want the columns to be directly in the section because I want to use flex but okay so the reason I don't want them in this section is that I don't want a section I don't want a section as an HTML element to dictate the style of what what its containers are, right? I want that to be di dictated by a purposeful class. So I'll wrap these two columns in a class in a, in a div with a class of, uh, let's say flex. <clears throat> Where's x? There you go, flex. Now we'll go into here and we'll say home sections flex is display flex and uh, flex direction row rows rows cool and then um, justify content center all right now our two columns are looking good and but I can put like styles on the sections that would be not pertaining to the columns themselves because like I don't want to restrict the sections to being column 
parents every time. Maybe I want some content outside of um, the flex parent, or maybe I want two kind of types of columns in the same section, right? So I'm being a little bit like forward thinking about this, and I want the flex element here to be the distributor of the flex kind of properties. I don't think I'm explaining that very well, but you'll see what I mean. So, but we can say section right here, and I just want to put some padding on it, like 50. 50 pixels of padding? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, but left and right, zero. Okay. <clears throat> so let me show you with this columns. We'll put a background of pink. Now we can see how these columns are working, that when I get bigger, these columns stay centered. And that's good. That's exactly what we wanted. <clears throat> but we need to put what happens when these columns get too small. I don't want it in a, in a mobile setting these columns still be there. So remember, the max width of the columns is going to be 640 pixels, because 320 times 2 is 640. So we'll say at media, max width is equal to uh, 640 pixels. And then in there, I'll take those columns again. Oh, it's not the columns themselves. It's the, <clears throat> it's the flex guy. So it's going to be home, sections, flex. And we'll say display block. All right, so when this gets below 640, right now it's at 670. And display block, yay! But we need to take those columns right here. Call dash one and say its max width is auto. Is that a property of max width? No, it's one hundred percent. And that was exactly what we wanted. So let's show that again. Here's the two columns. Our navigation breaks at at uh, six forty plus one thirty five, which is seven seventy five, and that happens right there. We still have our two columns until we get to six forty, and they break right there and we have two columns vertically stacked. So this is completely responsive. That's exactly how we wanted it to act. Let's take care of those other use cases. So those are the two centered ones like that and like that. What about uh, what about uh, what about these floating ones? How will we do that? Column 2. What do we have here? Column jade flex. Let's say flex center. that one and we'll break this guy off and say flex dash dash center and then let's make another class that says uh, flex dash dash space around and justify content space around now we need to, if we have two more columns in a different section, oh, you guys are dented. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now we have a different section, and this one's going to be YouTube or something. We want space around. When the browser refreshes, ooh, what do we have here? I don't think I did it right. Did I not put it in the HTML? Justify. There we go. That's what we wanted. Okay, so you see how these things kind of float a little bit differently? So in situations like these, uh, this Vine here and these Dribble and Behance, these ones will flow a little differently. They won't be locked together because they're, they're interdependent, right? They're not independent. They're not independent of each other. They still rely on each other for context, but they're not dependent on each other for structure, right? Like these ones are, or like, 
you know, like these ones are, these ones are. Um, they're interdependent. So we want them to be able to float on their own, but yes, come together, and then when the time comes, boop, right there. Yeah, okay. Okay, now there's another thing I want to think about where these, these columns here, uh, some of them will have these called actions. And when they're collapsed, every time I want that call to action to be on the bottom, right? And so what we're doing here is we're removing uh, flex, so the bottom will be, be the second one in the DOM. In this case, uh, the column one, the second column will be on the bottom. So this one's going to have the CTA. Let's say it has a CTA. And that's fine, but when it's flexed, sometimes I need that has CTA to be on the left, right? I need it to be ordered a little bit differently. And so how I'm going to do that is, let's say if this one has a, um, a CTA on it, and what has CTA, I don't want to focus on the fact that it has a CTA. It's just going to be the one. Mm -hmm. We want to say um, order. first. I guess that would be fine. Uh, so here we go to flex. Order first is going to be uh, order negative uh, negative one. Okay, now so what happened? The, the CTA here is on the left and that's kind of what we want for this style and then when we when we shrink our browser down it will be on the bottom because the order property is dependent on the display flex property. Since we're removing that when we get into mobile dimensions, the order is no longer valid, uh, valid CSS and it's ignored. So it will go to the bottom. And that's how we get those um, CTAs on the left from time to time. We'll put a class of order-first on it. I like it. Now we have another style as well where we have uh, kind of like down here a full width. It's two columns. So let's make a class in the column section called call dash two. Now this max width is going to be uh, 300 plus 300, so it's 600 plus the 20 pixels in the middle, so 620. Now it's accommodating for the margins in the middle, but it's not accommodating for the margins on the right and the left. So we need to add those, similar to how we did in the column dash one, column the margin zero, 10 pixels on the right and the left. And that's that's it. Put a background on it so we can see it, and we'll call this one Honeydew. If we go into our columns.jade, let's grab another section. All right, now this is this. We don't need that second column, because we're just doing a one column thing that will span both columns, so column two. I don't know what flex space around will do. Okay, um, yeah, that worked. Here's one column that sits in the middle, and oh, we need to put flex center. You put flex center to get that floating in the center. Let's reuse that class. Cool. So the column uh, classes here, these will dictate just basically the dimensions of the columns. And then the flex classes here, will affect how those columns are displayed and in what way. <clears throat> now there's another type of column that I want which is uh, which is like this. This one's going to be really interesting. 
this one's going to be, it's not limited to 320 pixels, right? It's basically going to, going to ignore that convention. So I want to have, and I'll just call it a call dash 50, because it's 50% of the width, even though it's not 50 columns. But you with me, you get me. Um, so I'll say width is 50%. Yeah, that's good. So we'll make another um, another section here below this one. Okay, and uh, I'll say column. I'll say the second one. Column fifty. Not space around. Let me see this comment. Let me see. Is this right? Let's say uh, background um, yellow. It's 50% wide, but it's not touching the edges like I wanted. It's not doing what I wanted because it's space around. So what I need to do, <laughs> okay, here's what I need to do on that one. I think that I can make this work with just the existing classes. So space around becomes center, and column one actually gets inside of column 50. So, so there's going to be two column 50s here. They're going to be centered, and then column 50 gets a flex, and flex center. <laughs> flex center, okay, as well. Now, hoping what will happen here and we have a flex 50 and a flex 50. So these two, that, that works. But I have a flex center here and this is not centered. Hmm, flex center Flex. Oh, okay. Two dashes. Save and center. Okay, that's uh, that's what I wanted. Okay, so uh, th there's two elements here. They're both yellow, so it looks like one big spanning element. Let me show you. Here's one, and here's the other. They're both 50% wide, which means they're no, they're not going to be constrained by um, the the same 320. Uh, pixels that the other columns are, and when I and then and then this one actually has inside of it another column dash one which is constrained and it's centered inside of that column. So we have like a fifty percent one and then a fifty percent one with a small one floating inside it. When I bring it down here, it will it will break. But I, that's good. That's good. But I um, because it needs to be not. Uh, flex, um, it, but it needs to be full width again. So in home, under this column, I'll say call call dash fifty. That's a class uh, width is um, auto. There we are. I think that's all of the use cases, right? So we have column, floating columns, one big centered column, and then like 50% width that collapses and stuff like that. I think that's just about everything. All right, I'm very happy. So we, what we've done now is we've built a, a grid, custom uh, flexible grid, responsive grid, just for this design. And because we know exactly what our design is going to be, we know exactly what I want, our grid can be like tailored exactly to what we need. So yeah, I'm looking pretty good. Oh yeah, buddy. We're in a great place for next week's video where we lay out the hero section and the YouTube section. This grid is awesome. All right, by now you know the drill. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. What are you waiting for? And uh, hit me up on Twitter at 
Dev Tips Show. And if you haven't yet, find the patron immediately to your left and thank them. Thank you. They make this content free for everybody by supporting the channel, and they do so on at patreon.com slash devtips. Here is a list of the patrons. These people are incredible human beings, and they enjoy certain perks for being a patron, and I'll tell you about them some other time, and if you want to skip ahead to that, you can visit patreon.com slash devtips. And until our next video, please don't ever stop. Hacking. Keep on hacking.